During World War II, when resources were scarce and the weather often turned homes into leaking, crumbling shelters, an overlooked innovation quietly changed the game. The oil cloth. Before plastics and synthetic coatings existed, people discovered how to make ordinary fabric waterproof, and it saved walls, roofs, and even entire shelters from collapse. This wasn't fancy equipment or imported tech. It was homemade chemistry, linseed oil, patience, and a bit of survival genius. What started as a domestic fix for leaky kitchens and cold drafts became a vital home defence tool across Europe, especially during the Blitz and in rural communities cut off from supply chains. Today, that same principle, making surfaces waterproof and windproof with natural oil, remains one of the most practical low-cost ways to harden a structure against the elements. So, in this guide, we're diving into how the wartime oilcloth worked, how it was made, how it turned flimsy walls into weatherproof barriers, and how you can still apply that same method today, whether you're restoring a bunker, sealing a survival cabin, or just respecting the craft of those who endured the hardest years of the 20th century. The original oil cloth dates back to long before the Second World War. Sailors in the 18th century were already coating canvas sails with boiled linseed oil to protect them from salt water. But it was in the 1930s and 40s that the process found its second life. In wartime, Britain and parts of occupied Europe paint tar and proper sealants became nearly impossible to find. People started turning to what they had fabric scraps, old curtains and buckets of linseed oil salvaged from furniture workshops or farms. The process was brutally simple but effective. You take a tightly woven cotton or linen sheet, soak it in boiled linseed oil, sometimes mixed with beeswax or turpentine, for faster drying. Then hang it for days, sometimes weeks, until it cured into a rubbery waterproof layer. When dried, it could be nailed or pasted onto interior walls, ceilings, or even over broken window frames. The result was a barrier that kept rain from seeping in and cold draughts from cutting through cracked plaster. In bombed-out cities like London, families used these sheets to create temporary weather walls, sealing off damaged rooms so the rest of the house could stay habitable through winter. The reason the oilcloth worked wasn't just because it repelled water. When applied to wooden or plaster surfaces, it created a flexible membrane, a breathable, semi-sealed skin that adjusted to temperature changes without cracking. In survival terms, that's gold. It meant homes could trap warmth while resisting dampness, extending the lifespan of old timber and brick even under heavy rain or snow. Soldiers noticed this too. In field shelters, oilcloth became the difference between a dry corner and a muddy pit. Some resistance fighters used oilcloth layers inside hideouts, wrapping them over earthen walls to prevent rot. Farmers lined the inside of barns with it to protect animal feed from moisture when tarpaulin supplies ran out. The technique even made its way into trench design, where soldiers repurposed old oilcloth rain capes to line dugouts, keeping sleeping areas dry for weeks at a time. If you want to replicate this loss method, the process hasn't changed much. Start with a dense natural fabric. Untreated cotton duck or linen canvas is ideal. Synthetic fabrics won't absorb oil properly. Spread the fabric flat on a clean surface outdoors and, you know, using a brush or gloved hands, apply boiled linseed oil evenly across the entire surface. You can mix in a small amount of turpentine, 
roughly one part to three parts oil, to help it soak faster and dry more evenly. After coating, hang it in a dust-free, well-ventilated place to cure. It can take anywhere from three days to two weeks, depending on humidity and temperature. When done right, the cloth will darken slightly and feel smooth, but not sticky. Once it's cured, it's ready for use. In a modern survival context, you can tack it to the inside of an off-grid cabin to block drafts, lay it under a leaky roof as a liner, or even wrap it around stored gear to keep moisture out. The key is patience. If you rush the drying, the oil will stay tacky and the surface won't harden properly. There's a quiet genius in how simple this was. No factory, no synthetic resin, just natural chemistry doing what polymers do today. Linseed oil oxidizes and forms a solid matrix, effectively turning fabric into a primitive composite material. In remote or grid-down situations, that knowledge is invaluable. If you have access to flaxseed oil or any drying oil, you can waterproof shelter materials without relying on tarps, paints or plastics. It's also a sustainable defence measure. Oil cloths can be repaired endlessly, just re-oil and re-hang. For homesteaders or bunker restorers, that means long-term durability without recurring costs. Even museum conservators still use similar treatments when restoring historical tents, banners and early aviation fabrics. Think of the wartime oil cloth not just as a patchwork fix, but as a small act of defiance. Proof that even under bombing raids and resource shortages, people could innovate using what they had. They didn't just survive the storm, they waterproofed against it. If you're restoring an old shelter or creating a self-sufficient cabin, consider lining vulnerable sections near windows, under eaves or around door frames with homemade oilcloth instead of modern plastic sheeting. It's biodegradable, resistant to cracking, and if scorched or torn, it doesn't release toxic fumes like vinyl. For those experimenting with historical recreations, you can also make smaller panels to test waterproofing performance. For instance, coat a one-by-one-foot section and measure how well it resists rain over 48 hours. That's the kind of practical experimentation that keeps the spirit of wartime ingenuity alive. The best part is that the same oilcloth you use on walls can double as a ground sheet, gear wrap, or even a firewood cover. It's a survival multi-tool disguised as fabric, a technology that carried people through the worst winters of the 1940s and still holds up today. When we study wartime survival, it's easy to focus on the big machines and battles, but the oil cloth, a simple mix of oil and cloth, represents the quiet resilience of ordinary people defending their homes from the elements when everything else failed. It's not just a material, it's a method, a mindset, and a lesson in resourcefulness. If you value history that still teaches practical skills, make sure to subscribe to Warfield Survival. Share this video with someone who appreciates the forgotten ingenuity of everyday wartime life. Because sometimes the strongest defence wasn't steel, it was the cloth on the wall.